those poor unfortunate souls. Hello and welcome to Poor Unfortunate Podcast. I'm Caroline A. Meddy. And I'm Connor Perkins. Welcome all of our listeners to a brand new episode of our bi-weekly mini-series, Caroline What's New, where we go through all of the latest and greatest in Disney news. So, Caroline, what's new? As always, let's start with some Disney Parks news. We'll start with two bits of Walt Disney World news. So, as of June 28th, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is officially open in the Magic Kingdom. Previews have ended, and now the general public can get on the ride. Super, super exciting. And this is just such an interesting piece of news to me, just such a a shock of something we lost. The Frontierland Shootin' Arcade in Magic Kingdom is no more. It's gone. It closed permanently on June 23rd, and it will be replaced by a DVC member lounge. And it's like, I'm okay with it being gone, but it was just such a, I don't know, it's just such an iconic thing that I always see. So it's interesting that it won't be there anymore. But Yeah, I'm okay with it being gone. I just wish it was like... It was so sudden. They put in something that more people could have. Oh, my gosh. And also, please, like, me and my family are DBC. Like, there's one lounge that's an Epcot that's nice. But generally, it's like, give me a break. Generally, I mean, the give new me one break. that they just opened in, like, Communicore or whatever, it's a if. joke. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. So I wish it, I really wish it wasn't for that. And I'm saying that as a DBC member. So there's that. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> and... In the most major parks news I feel like we've had in a while, (laughs) (laughs) the Disney Genie Plus and Lightning Lane systems, as we know them, are being completely overhauled. So in both (laughs) Walt Disney World, again, (laughs) what really should have happened is we should have just gone back to Fast Pass. But instead, here's what's happening. In both Walt Disney World and Disneyland, Genie Plus will no longer exist. So moment of silence for all of the hours that all of us took to learn. Genie Plus and everything that it meant. Uh, Starting on July 24th, Genie Plus will now be called Lightning Lane Multipass. And individual Lightning Lanes will just become Lightning Lane Single Passes. So the new Lightning Lane Multipass will allow you to reserve three Lightning Lanes for rides in one theme park in advance of your visit. So, okay, as much as we're joking around... That is a game changer. So Disney and that's in, per day, right? Yes, this is yes per day, and so which gets, is like Fast Pass Plus. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it does get a little. I'm still like, and once you use your first one, you can start booking more. Very similar. I'm still yeah. a, a little bit confused about how things work with park hopping. Like when you reserve them in advance, you've got to pick one park. It can't be in multiple parks, but just like. I don't 100% know how that works yet, but most important thing is that you can now do this in advance. So for Walt Disney World Resort Hotel guests, uh, you can start utilizing this service seven days in advance and other guests can plan three days in advance. So what is pretty amazing about this is you will be able to choose attractions and arrival windows for those attractions before purchasing the multi-pass so that you know what to expect and you don't Hmm. invest in this and suddenly, um, you know, based on the the timing of your day and the things you want to do, the things you want to do aren't available. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a good transparency. Yeah. And uh, the Lightning Lane single pass is pretty much going to work the same way as the individual Lightning Lanes work now in Genie Plus. So those um, single attractions in each park that are eligible for that are the same. And that system is basically the same. If you Even if you don't buy the multi-pass, you can buy this single Lightning Lane and go on that attraction. So as usual, there's like the single ride in each park that's like the top tier one that you buy the individual for or not the single. In I was looking at some of this, and again, we'll talk about it more as we learn it more, but like in each park, except for Animal Kingdom, rides were kind of put into tiers as well. So I don't know exactly what that means. So we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll talk more about it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean I, maybe again, we just like, get rid of it all. <laughs> yeah. I, I say scrap it all. Um, I'll say that, like, also, I guess this wasn't going to change, but it's like the the opening window for doing these reservations is still 7 a.m. So fine. You're not you're not doing the 7 a.m. panic while you're on vacation, but it's still getting up early. Like if you're staying at a Disney hotel a week before and kind of panicking and doing that whole thing. Um, But it's we're doing incremental improvements here. So I guess I will take it. I'll take it. 
for now. Yeah, but also, like, if your trip itself is, like, an eight-day trip, that means yeah. on one of the days, yeah. Yeah. you might be waking up at 7 a.m. to do it if you're staying yeah. in a hotel. And if you're not staying on a hotel with only three days in advance, if you're staying more than three days, you're definitely going to be still waking up at mm-hmm. 7 a.m. on your yeah. trip yeah. to start booking out. Yeah. I mean, on my most recent trip, granted, almost everybody in my family who came with me when we went in April, we've been there before. So we didn't do any Genie Plus. We only did individual Lightning Lane for, what do we even do it for? Rise of the Resistance, maybe? Um, and so it's like, I get it. If you if you don't if you don't get to go a lot or you've never been and you'd like to have things planned out, I get it. But sometimes I'm just like, feel it out first. Like, so this is the thing is they're gonna get this is the interesting part about it is because you can do it in advance, they're gonna get people's money who might get there and have booked all this and realize they didn't particularly need it, depending on the time of year that they go. So there's also that. Lots to consider. Well, in the Disney Plus world. Things that are now available. Season three of The Bear is now streaming on Hulu through Disney Plus. So. Yes, yeah, chef. Go watch that. Yes, yeah, chef. Some things that have been announced or are coming soon. So July 3rd, that's a big day for Bluey fans as a new uh, group of minisodes will drop to Disney Plus. Ooh. Descendants, The Rise of Red, as well as the sing-along versions of the first three Descendants films will be available to stream on Disney Plus on July 12th. The season finale of The Acolyte drops in July, so make sure that you catch up on those episodes now and every Tuesday through July 16th. July 16th is the season finale. And then Epcot Becoming Inside the Transformation. This was the National Geographic documentary about the transformation of Epcot that aired on TV in April. That is going to be available for streaming on July 19th, among other things. But Mm -hmm. these are just some of the things that I saw on the list that I wanted to highlight that are coming rather soon on Disney+. Plus, In terms of Disney films, things that are out and available, really the big thing here is Inside Out 2. It has hit a major milestone as of last week with its domestic grosses crossing $378.8 million and climbing. It has now passed the lifetime domestic gross earnings of the first film, and has secured the number 10 all-time place for gross domestic earnings for an animated film behind Frozen. And it's wow. continuing to rise. Um, the film has also passed, as of today, the $1 billion mark wow. worldwide. So wow. people are saying Inside Out 2 is basically like the box office hit of the summer and like saving the movies this summer in the way wow. that Barbie kind of did. I mean, when I went, I went at nine o'clock on a weekday. The theater was completely filled with every age group that you could imagine. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it was really cool. When I went to see it, we had f- like three elderly ladies. We had my family and then we had two dads with their daughter behind us, like their young daughter. It was it was just everybody was there to see it. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Yes, like, definitely. It is 150% worth the money to see it. Agreed. It's a good movie. It is. Some things that have been announced and are coming soon in the Disney film world. So Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan are officially back together again Woo! on set for the new sequel to their 2003 film, which was a remake of Freaky Friday. Yeah. So no details about the story have been released, but both Chad Michael Murray and Mark Harmon will be reprising their roles as well as Anna's bandmates from Pink Slip. Wow, so, wow. yeehaw. The film is <laughs> slated to release in summer 2025. Uh, it's going to be great. It's I just know it's going to yeah, be great. Yeah, I agree. Great. <laughs> and then as of a couple days ago, reshoots have been completed and filming has officially wrapped for the live-action Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, starring Rachel Zegler and Gal Gadot. It was supposed to release this year, but it's been pushed back to March 21st, 2025. Hmm. There have also been a lot of people who are like, oh, my God, reshoots, reshoots, reshoots. And I just want to take this opportunity to tell people that reshoots do not inherently mean that Mm -hmm. (laughs) they have rewritten the script or that something was bad. It could it, it can be for the very simple thing of like someone realized in post that they were holding um 
something in their hand and then they switched to another angle and she was holding it in another hand. So they had to reshoot that mm-hmm. scene. So there have been a lot of people who are like foaming at the mouth about the se- Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs about, movie. Yes, about this movie. Oh my goodness. It's getting very annoying. And yeah. in particular, yeah. like the reshoots and they're like, oh my God, they're doing reshoots. They're doing reshoots. It does not mean that anything has been rewritten at all. Foaming at the mouth. I love it. It's true. Like, I, I'm I'm just like, I don't, I, I, I can't even. That really got does me. Does Rachel Zegler really get under your skin that yeah, much? Yeah, like it's, 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 oh, well, to, maybe that's a future rant. Who knows? I, <laughs> like, I, I'm please. just like, if you don't like her, her fine, don't let her have that much power over you. <laughs> like, she literally doesn't care. <laughs> People are weird. They are, man. And the internet is extra weird. All right, and then in some miscellaneous news to wrap things up, oh, super exciting. The stage adaptation of Hercules is moving to the West End next summer at the Theater Royal Drury Lane. Tickets will go on sale later this year. <laughs> we, we we say this about everything. We might have to go. I mean, We're, the we clips, might. The, we, we have we to. Will. <laughs> we the will. The clips that they have released from the Germany production are just, they look so it's phenomenal. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and it just makes me sad that, like, um, American audiences and critics are just so ruthless that I feel like that's part of the reason that it's going to the West End I mean, like, look, look at what we did to their production of Cabaret. Then, yeah, and yeah, over exactly. The West End. Yeah. And we tore it to shreds. And we're, yeah, right. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I hope it will have a safe and loving home in the West End. I'm Me so excited too. to hear about casting for that. And finally, just a little, a little piece of uh, Disney Cruise Line news. The Scat Cat Lounge was announced as an addition to the Disney Treasure Cruise Ship, which will debut in December. We've talked a little bit about it. Um, this ca- it's just this one really just grabbed both Connor and my attention. Absolutely. It's just so delightful. The Catastic Piano Lounge will serve drinks like the Creme de la Creme Martini, inspired by the kitten's favorite treat, which like, side note, like weren't we all kind of just like obsessed and wanted to eat that when we were little? Like, I we wanted to take a Ritz it? cracker and dunk oh, into I just wanted that to thing. taste it. <laughs> so now we can. And then this this one's particularly good. We have the cat drink. A nearly translucent cocktail that will show off handcrafted drinkware that will be embossed at the bottom with this like 3D image of a cat. Case. Yeah, it's and like, but also, but it's so you because in it is like bourbon and, and like Aperol. And yeah, like, I was like, wait, your <laughs> I was like, wait, that sounds good. So good. The cat face is terrifying and like amazing at the same time. So you have to have it. I have to have both. So the Disney treasure will also be home to the world of Marvel and Plaza de Coco restaurants, which we've discussed a little bit on here before. So as we always say, we'll be, we'll be going. going. <laughs> and we're never we'll right. We'll be going. You never know. You know what? I'm I'm gonna start pricing. I'm London, gonna start pricing things out. Disney treasure, um Tokyo, fantasy Disney springs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then one other thing to add to our little other uh, miscellaneous thing. So I just got back from my vacation to Cape Cod. And while I was there, um, I told these people I would give them a shout out. Oh, but yes. I visited the Cape Cod toy chest and they had an incredible selection of Funko Pops. Oh, and yes. I found this giant ass 10 inch crowned <laughs> Ursula. Funko Pop. Yes. That was from one of the, like, owner's personal collections that they were, like, selling. They were like, I have to get rid of this. I couldn't justify keeping her anymore. And I was like, well, she's going to a good home because I bought that The shit. best home. And uh, I, they were like, oh, can you sh- give us a shout out? I'm like, absolutely. So Cape oh, Cod yeah. Toy Chest. If y'all are find yourself on the Cape this summer, hit up the Cape Cod Toy Chest. They ha- Their collection of pops are, like kind of amazing. Yeah, you sent me pictures really, of, really of, of Pops I have never seen before. Yeah. yeah. Pretty amazing. They had the Disney 100 Tiana where, like, her gown is transforming and she has the magic swirls around her. I got an Agatha Harkness. I got a Pride BB-8. Oh, my God. Yeah, they've got it all there, so. Love that. Cape Cod Toy Chest. Hit them up. Love. Well, that's going to do it for us, folks. Uh, As always, if you liked what you heard, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make sure to follow us on social media. We are at Poor Unfortunate Podcast. And 
We'll see you next time for the next full episode, which should be a rant and a rave coming up for our second cycle. Until then, Beluga Savruga. Beluga Savruga.